what's up everybody welcome to vlog number five i can't believe we've had five vlogs already today i have a really special one for you i'm taking you back to my old stomping grounds back where everything started for me my first cash game wins to my first crushing losses to my first tournament chops to my first tournament crushing defeats everything happened here at this casino we are at wild horse pass sadly this poker room will no longer be here so i wanted to do a tribute to my home casino. This place is near and dear to my heart. Today I'm gonna play some one, two, just like old times. I'm really excited to show you guys where it all began for me. I also met some amazing friends along the way. One of them became one of my very best friends and she's here to tell you about our favorite memory here together. Hey guys, my name's Diana. It's, it's a very favorite special place for us because not only did we meet playing the two 100 cash tables here, we even played some of the tournaments here I remember Ashley, you had just gotten back from the World Series and I called you up and I was like, hey, do you want to jump in this tag team tournament? And we ended up cashing first, so that was a really awesome time. <laughs> we binked it. Uh, yeah, we binked that tournament, so it's bittersweet that they're closing up this poker room. But the cool thing is they're opening up this poker room at Longview, which is about five, seven minutes away. But yeah, we can still see our favorite dealers and see our friends and keep grinding. And while we still have time, we should go play some poker, Ashley. All right, let's do it. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> got called to a seat there was a pretty long wait but I did get in sat down at a seven-handed table and the table for the most part looked really passive and not a lot of action so I'm definitely looking to get in there be aggressive and play some pots I folded for a while before finally picking up a playable hand which was ace king offsuit in the small blind the button raises to seven dollars and I decide to make it twenty one dollars the big blind cold calls and the button also calls so we go three ways to a flop the flop is ten nine five all diamonds I'm not sure if I have the ace or the king of diamonds. I know either way I'm going to be firing on this board. I have range advantage and I also can put a lot of pressure on pretty much any holding that they have at this point. And not to mention I'm drawing to the nuts or to the second nuts. So I see bet $20 and sure enough they both fold pretty quickly. So the first pot that we play we pick it up and it's a good start to the session. So shortly after that hand we just won, Diana ends up at our table as well as my friend Mark. So in this hand we all play a pot together. It was kind of funny. So I raise to $11 with pocket threes from the hijack. It folds to Diana and she raises to $25 from the small blind and our friend Mark calls in the big blind. Since she made it so small and of course I'm going to play a pot against my friend, I call as well. So we go three ways to a flop. The flop is 6, 8, 10, 2 hearts. Diana checks, Mark checks, and I'm checking here with my pocket threes. The turn is a jack and it checks around again. And at this point I'm thinking maybe there's a possibility that my pocket threes are good. The river is another six and we all check again. And sure enough, Diana flips over ace king. My friend Mark flips over king queen and I flip over the winner. And of course I had to scoop the pot and needle her a little bit for raising so small pre-flop. But either way, it was a fun hand and we scoop yet another pot. All right, in this hand, we pick up the goods. We get pocket rockets in the cutoff. There's two limps and we raise to $15. The small blind and the limpers call. So we're going four ways to a flop. The flop is ace, king, seven, rainbow. We flop top set with our pocket aces. Feeling good, living the life, living the dream. Since there's no flush draws on board and we really only have to worry about gut shots at this point, I want to start putting money in the pot because our hand is so strong, but I don't want to bet big because there's not really much my opponents can have. So I bet $10, the small blind and the second limper call. The turn is a 10 of spades bringing a backdoor flush draw. So now I do need to bet for protection a little bit and I size up to $35. Sadly, they both fold, but we pick up a good pot here. And since some of them recognized me from my vlog and knew that I was recording, I wanted to show the pocket aces just because who doesn't want to show pocket aces when you flop top set? <laughs> so I show and we scoop yet another pot. 
Sure you don't want to raise me? <laughs> All right, so before we get into this next hand, a quick backstory. There seems to be one player at the table who might be somewhat capable and a little bit more on the aggressive side. I've seen him open most hands, which isn't typical at these one, two tables. There's a lot of limping and calling. So I do have to worry about him a little bit because he's on my direct left. So in this hand, there's an under the gun limp and I'm next to act with ace jack offsuit and I raise to $12. The guy to my direct left quickly reaches for raising chips and he makes it $35. Ace-Jack offsuit doesn't perform well out of position against an early position 3-bet, so I decide to let this one go, and he does show queens. So I made the correct fold, but I'm still watching this guy to see what his 3-bet range is, and so far he's had it and showed pretty strong hands when he has 3-bet. So that leads us into this next hand. Alright, so there's an under-the-gun limp, and I raised to $11 with Ace-Jack offsuit from the button. The small blind, the same kid who's 3-bet a little bit more frequently than anyone else at the table, 3-bets again and he makes it $35. He's 3-bet a decent amount now and I've seen a few strong hands showdown, but on the button with a decent ace, I'm definitely going to peel here, so we go heads up to a flop. The flop is 10-6-4 with two diamonds and I have the ace of diamonds in my hand. He leads for $65, and that's a 75% pop bet. At these 1-2 games, most of the time when people bet like that, they're just scared to get outdrawn with their made strong hands. I think I can still make an exploitative fold here. I would have loved to have peeled and see if we can pick up a little bit more equity on the turn, but he doesn't want us to see the turn, so we do fold, and he shows pocket queens again. So he has actually had it every single time now that he's 3-bet, and he's been showing all of his strong hands, so I'm happy that he showed and I could see that I made a good fold. But after that hand and raising and calling the 3-bet, my profit is slowly dwindling, but we're still in the green. All right, in this hand, we look down at the beautiful 9-10 of hearts under the gun. I make it $10, early position calls, and the small blind call. The flop is 5-5-4, five, five, two clubs, and facing multiple opponents on this board, my exact hand isn't a good one to start turning into a bluff. Yes, I have range advantage. I have virtually no equity. Sure, being aggressive is great, but if I'm gonna start bluffing with 9-10 of hearts on this board, I have way too many c-bets in my range, so this hand is just gonna function best as a check fold. Early position puts out a bet of $10, and we let this hand go. Alright, in this hand, I feel like I played it pretty weird. I'm not quite sure I like how I played this hand, but either way, I raised to $10 under the gun with ace-king offsuit. The hijack calls and the big blind calls, so we go three ways to a flop. The flop is queen-10-10, and they both check to me, and I decide to bet $10, and only the hijack calls. The turn is the king of clubs, bringing a backdoor flush draw, 
and she checks and I decide to check here. I'm not quite sure why I did that. I think I was thinking we're either way ahead or way behind when this king hits and I wanted to be a little bit deceptive because she probably doesn't have much. Maybe a pair of queens at best or some type of weird straight draw combination. So I wanted to check the king and hopefully get value on the river. The river is a five of clubs bringing a backdoor flush in and she checks to me and I bet $20 and she folds pretty quickly. Not sure I love how I play this hand, but either way, my opponents didn't have much and we scoop another pot. In this hand, there's a limp under the gun and I'm next to act and I raise to $12 with pocket nines. The small blind calls, the big blind calls, and the limper calls. So we go four ways to a flop. The flop is 7, 7, 10, two spades. It checks around and I decide to check as well. The turn is an eight of spades, bringing me a straight flush draw. The small blind leads for $20. Next to act raises to 50. And the original under the gun limper cold calls the 50. Stacks are just too shallow for me to peel here and hope to hit a straight flush on the river. So I do fold. The river is the three of diamonds bringing a total brick and the guy who led for 20 on the turn he checks, the big blind bets 75, and the limper calls the 75. The big blind shows a seven for trips, and the guy to my right shows six three suited for the flush. So we avoided losing an extra 50 bucks there with the brick on the river, and we live to see another day. All right, in this hand, the hijack limps, and I'm in the cutoff with king jack offsuit, and I raise to $10. The big blind calls and the limper call. So we go three ways to a flop. The flop is king five deuce rainbow. They both check to me and I see bet for $15 and I take it down. My friends Diana and Mark had gotten off the table and I decided to move over to the other side to get better position. And before I play this last hand that happened to be the biggest and funnest hand of the night, there was a lady who sat to my left who sat down and was playing super aggressive, bluffing, raising, calling raises, and doing some crazy things. So I got to see her play a few hands before we played this hand, and she was definitely there to gamble and throw in some chips, so I was happy to play a pot against her. So let's get into it. All right, last hand of the night, biggest pot of the night, funnest pot of the night. That same lady I was telling you about who was there to gamble and splashing around, she straddles under the gun for $5. There's four callers for the $5 before I'm in the big blind and look down at pocket tens. I raise to $40. The under the gun straddler quickly calls the 40, which I expected, and the others fold, so we go heads up to a flop. The flop is seven, eight, jack, rainbow. I decided to bet here and I bet $45. She quickly calls. The turn is another jack, and from what I'd seen before, every single time that she was checked to, she had bet, so I still think I'm ahead here, and I want her to start bluffing, so I checked to her, and sure enough, she bet $50, and I call. The river is a really interesting card. It's another jack, so I'm pretty confident I have the best hand here. I was trying to think the best way to get value here, and again, with what I've seen from her, she's very aggressive and she likes to bluff, so I do check it to her. And she bets $75. I am going to put in a raise here and hopefully she has some type of 8x combination and she also has a full house. I'm not sure if I'll get called, but with the way she plays, any other hands that have me beat, like aces, kings, or queens, would have three bet me pre-flop. So I put in a raise and I make it $200. She thinks for a long, long time, and then she actually ends up folding. So our last pot of the night, we scoop a healthy one. It was a fun pot, and I was happy to leave the table on a good note. What a cool way to not only end the session, but end my very, very last session to ever play at Wild Horse Pass. Again, this place was so special to me. I have so many countless memories there, and it's where my grind in poker really began and everything started for me. It was special to be back and see the dealers and the staff and to say hi to some friendly faces and even some new faces that were a fan of the vlog, which was really cool. We were in the game for 300 and we cashed out for $576 for a profit of $276. I couldn't be happier with the results that the session had and it was nice to leave Wild Horse Pass one last time with a profit in my pocket, and wherever my poker journey ends up taking me, Wild Horse Pass is a place that I will never ever forget.
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed vlog number five. If you did, would you guys do me a huge favor and go all in and like, comment, and subscribe. It would mean the world to me in helping grow the channel. Also, if you're interested in playing some poker on a mobile app, head to the description where you'll find the club and my agent ID. We'll get you signed up and we'll get you playing poker in no time. It's 24 seven action, guaranteed funds, and insanely fast cash outs and deposits. I promise you'll love it. So check the description for that. This weekend, I'm headed to Las Vegas to play the ladies championship tournament i'm super excited so that will probably be vlog number six so stay tuned for that again thank you for watching i hope you liked it and we'll see you guys next time